timing diagram. Timing diagram shows the graphical representation of all the timing and control signals generated from the processor whenever an instruction is being executed. Some of the terminologies should be known before we discuss about this timing diagram. Number one is they define what is instruction cycle. Instruction cycle. This is time taken to execute one instruction is known as instruction cycle. So the instruction cycle consists of two cycles. One is fetch cycle, another one is execution cycle. Either it may be in data or it may be in instruction. Everything is stored only in memory. Suppose in memory location of 1000, if you have instruction movie media, DA comma, data 50, this is an instruction. So not to execute that instruction, first of all the instruction is to be fetched, then it is to be executed. So you can take uh, in microprocessor, this is this is the T state, 1T, second T state, 3T and 4T. This is what they say fetch cycle. It requires 3T state and 1T state is required for executing that instruction. So as a whole, the time taken to execute one instruction, they call it as instruction cycle. Instruction cycle. Right? Then machine cycle. Machine cycle number two is machine cycle. This is time taken to perform one operation is machine cycle. Suppose if you take move immediate a comma data by zero, this is it can, this instruction consists of two machine cycles. The first machine cycle is upward fetch, the second machine cycle is memory read. So the time taken to perform one operation is known as one machine cycle. Then T state. See so generally they say T state. So a portion of an operation performed in one clock period they define as a T state. If the system clock frequency is 2 MHz, that means that oscillator will generate 2 into 10 to the power of 6 T states per second. That means of T states are generated per second. So the time taken, the operation performed during one system clock period, they define as T state. Now if you look into any microprocessor, right, either it may be 80, 85, 80, 86 or whatever it may be, the various operations that are performed by any microprocessor are only 5, right. The, micro, the operations performed by the microprocessor is, number 1 is upward fetch. It can fetch an instruction. Number two is it can fetch a data from memory. So you, you can say it is memory read. Number three is it can write something into the memory. So that is memory write. Or it can read some data from I.O. devices, which is called as I.O. read. Or it can write something into the I.O. devices, which is what they define as I.O. write. So these are all the five different operations which are performed by any microprocessor. So let us see the timing diagram. Whenever the microprocessor is fetching an output, how the timing signals are generated, how the contents of address and data buses are varying. So everything, similarly how the ALE pin is used to demultiply the address and data bus, everything we will discuss in detail. Okay. So let us see the timing diagram for output fetch. The timing diagram for this is the timing diagram for awkward fetch cycle. As far as the 8085 is concerned, it requires four T state in order to execute the instruction. Okay, the first signal is clock. You can say the starting point to another stop starting point of that uh, pulse is called as one T state. First T state, second T state, third T state, and fourth T state. Now you take that A15 to A8. This is a higher order address bus. Actually, in 8085, there are 8 pins which are adapted for this um, higher order address bus. Right? So, always this bus carries, you see here, higher order memory address. 
when the instruction is executed from one particular memory location, suppose if you are executing from the memory location of 1000, 1000, now this is a lower order address bus, this is the higher order address value. This one zero, that is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is loaded here from A8 to A15. Now, this AD0 to AD7, this is address data bus 0 to address data bus 7. Okay? This is represented here. I will explain a little later. See, the same bus should be used as an address bus, the lower order address bus. Then, the same bus should be used for carrying the data also. That is uh, how they, we say that the lower order address bus or the memory address bus is multiplexed with the data bus. So, once if we go for a multiplexing technique, we have to go for demultiplexing the address and data bus. That is why whenever an instruction is executed, you can see that the ALE signal, address latch enable. So, from this pin, whenever an instruction is executed, the microprocessor will generate one pulse. So, this is used to demultiplex the address and data bus. Once if the ALE signal, is, signal generates a pulse, immediately what will happen is, the address available from AD0 to AD7 is latched. By using a latch, they will store the lower order address bus. Okay? So, you see the lower order memory address is available for some time in the bus of AD0 to AD7. Once the ALE, from the ALE pin, if a pulse is generated, this is available after the latch, after the latch. Now, you can see that IO bar M bar signal should be low during the first T state itself because this is the memory related operation. The instruction is stored in memory, right? So, in order to fetch an instruction, this IO bar M bar signal should be low during the first T state itself. Then, during the second T state, the read bar signal is low. The read bar signal is low. You can see that it is low during the second T state. See, during the memory interfacing, we have already discussed that the IO bar, M bar and read bar signal is compared with the read bar of the memory IC. So, whenever this signal is low and IO bar, M bar, this is also low, the memory IC will be enabled. So, immediately what will happen is, during, whenever the read bar signal is low, the IO bar, M bar is already low during the first T state. Immediately, what will happen is, already we are pointing the address, okay. So, from that particular address, the opcode or instruction is loaded into the data bus. Now, you see where it is loaded from AD0 to AD7. So, up to this, it is carrying the address. Whenever the pulse is high, that ALE generates a pulse, right? This is latch, the lower order address is available after the latch. Now, this bus, the same AD0 to AD7 is used to carry the instruction which is stored in the memory. So, whenever the read bar signal is low, the instruction is loaded into the data bus, the soft code. The soft code is loaded into D0 to D7. Now, during the third T state, again the read bar signal should be high. It will go high. So, you see, between the second T state to third T state, between the second T state to third T state, the op code is available in the data bus. So, before it goes high, no, before the third T state, this op code or the instruction code should be moved into the instruction register of the microprocessor. Okay. Then, as far as this S0 and S1 is concerned, during the instruction fetch cycle, both must be one, both must be one. Okay. So, this is the timing diagram of upcode fetch. Okay. What is the point sort to be remembered is, you see, A8 to A15, it always holds the higher order memory address. AD0 to AD7 is used to store the lower order address as well as the data. So, whenever the ALE is high, immediately the lower order address is latched. The IO bar M bar signal goes slow during the first T state itself because it is memory related operation. Then the read bar signal should be low during the second T state. Whenever the read bar signal is low, the data or the opcode, the opcode or the instruction is loaded into the data bus and the read bar signal will be high during the third T state. So, within the second T state to third T state, the opcode or instruction is to be transferred from the memory to the instruction register of microprocessor. And as far as the status signal is concerned, both should be high during the instruction fetch cycle. 
right so within the 30 state the instruction is available in the instruction register of microprocessor then what is the purpose of this t4 the t4 is the this during this t, t state only the instruction will be executed first three t states are used to fetch the instruction from the memory the last t state the t4 is used to execute that instruction execute that instruction that is why you see whenever the instruction is being executed the address and data buses may have any value that is why it is it, it is it is it is drawn with the dotted lines okay so but because within the third t state the instruction is available in the instruction register so fourth t state is exclusively for executing that instruction so during whenever the instruction is being executed the address and data buses may consist of any value it is not going to affect the system organization so when, so during that machine cycle whenever the instruction is being executed some other peripherals may want to make use of these address and data bus right so that is what they call it as cycle stealing whenever the instruction is being executed the address and data buses are free right it may consist of any value it is not going to affect our system organization so during that time some other peripherals may steal the cycle may steal the cycle that is what they define as cycle stealing cycle stealing a typical example of cycle stealing is dma controller direct memory access controller whenever if you want to move a bulk amount of data from hard disk to main memory or from main memory to peripheral devices you need not uh, fetch the data byte by byte so the, you can move the data in a bulk way so that time if dma give a request then this this cycle can be stolen by the dma and by using this uh, address and data buses it can move a bulk amount of data from one place to another without the intervention of cpu okay that is what they define as cycle stealing so this is what uh, the timing diagram for mock code fetch okay now if you take the timing diagram of memory read this we can use the same diagram okay let, let me take the, what is the timing diagram for memory read memory read everything is same because either it may be an instruction or it may be a data everything is stored in memory if it is an memory read okay be if it is an instruction it has to be read and it, it has to be executed if it is a memory read it, the data need not be executed so you forget about this t4 just you can erase this t4 for memory read it requires only 3t state it requires only 3t state so here instead of op code you have to say it is a data it is a data it is a data okay then every explanation is same what is the purpose of a to a15 a0 to a7 al is used for demultiplex in the address and data bus io bar n bar should be should go slow during the first t state itself because it is memory read operation during the second t state the read bus signal should go slow whenever it goes slow this is already low so immediately the data which is pointed by this address buses should be loaded into the data bus the read bus signal should go slow during the third t state so within the second to third t state the data should be moved from memory to microprocessor memory to microprocessor okay then this as far as the status signal s0 and s1 is concerned right this is the truth table if s0 s1 if both are 0 0 it is no operation if it is 0 1 means write 1 0 means read 1 1 is of code switch okay so for memory read s not must be 0 so s not must be 0 and s1 must be 1 s1 this is the only change for memory read okay now let us take the time discuss the time and diagram for memory write memory write if you take memory right it also consists of 3t state it also consists of 3 state 3t state the only changes to be made is 
that instead of the read bar, it will generate a signal called write bar. Write bar. Then for write, S not is one. S not is one. And S one is zero. So this is S not. This is S one. This is the time and diagram for memory write. Your very explanation is same. Like instead of read bar, you have to explain that with write bar. That's all. Okay. Now if you take I O read bar, I O read bar. Next one is. I O read A timing diagram for I O read. So in the case of I O read, this is same, this is same, this is same. This here, what you have to write is I O bar M bar. If it is a memory related operation, it should be low. If it is an I O related operation, this I O bar M bar signal should be high. This I O bar M bar signal should be high. So you have to point like this. Okay. So time and diagram for I O write bar. So everything is same clock A15 to A18, A8, A8 to A87, the same purpose. A E for demultiplexing. Now here the I O bar M bar should be high. In the previous case for memory it should be low. If it is an I O related operation, the signal should be a high level signal. Then everything is same. Write bar. Same purpose. Then the S not is zero and S one is one. This is the timing diagram for I O read bar. If it sorry, this is I O read no. I O read bar. Okay. Now if it is I O write bar, this I O write. So what you have to do? This is also a memory related operation. So the O bar M bar should be high. Now instead of read bar, you have to use write bar. Now the S one is zero and S not is one. That's all. Then every explanation is same, right? So by using, if you know the basic things, no, the time and diagram explaining, the time and diagram or understanding is very very simple. Okay. Now sometimes they may ask you to draw the timing diagram for movie period A comma forty movie period A comma forty. So it comes up two missing cycles. So one is output fetch, another one is data memory read. So you have to draw four plus three seven T states. You have to combine one output fetch with one memory read. So you have to draw and explain with seven T state. And if you take an insertion of uh, Yes, T A store accumulator at one two zero zero H. It requires four machine cycles. This is output fetch one output fetch. Then memory read lower order byte one memory read plus another memory read higher order byte one lower order byte. Then again one memory read right now. What is the meaning of STA one two zero one two zero zero? Store the content of the accumulator at the memory location of one two zero zero. So fetching the output, reading the lower order byte address, reading the higher order byte address, then the data will be returned in that address. So you require one more memory write out. So 